Hello, everybody. I've been busy with another creative project lately, so I've been neglecting my wonderful Panzer Corps 2. So I decided to do a little Panzer Corps 2 video to tide you over and poop in your blitzkrieg. A little. The point is that I've thought of a new and somewhat unconventional way of building your core force in the game. I'd like to call it demotorization or get off your ass, you lazy bastard. And it's based on three premises. One, if you look at your typical core force in either of the Panzer Corps games, you'll see that there are quite a lot of tanks and not too much infantry. Panzer Corps 2 beefed them up a little, but they're still supposed to be utility units. My problem is that it wasn't like this in real life. If you look at the order of battle of the Wehrmacht at the outset of Operation Barbarossa, there were about 150 divisions in total, of which only 30 were tank divisions, motorized infantry, mechanized infantry, or light divisions. That's 20%. It's almost like Pareto principle. 20% do 80% of work. But the conclusion is that in your core force, motorized units should occupy only 20% of your core slots, and 80% should be non motorized. Now, on to premise two. When thinking about this, I realized that the units you see in in the game do not represent divisions, because you didn't have AT gun divisions, you didn't have AA gun divisions, you didn't have recon divisions, which I think kind of defeats the purpose. Okay, Germans had one artillery division briefly, and the Soviets had a bunch of them, because they liked experimenting with all those big formations. The point is that you somehow have to insert all of those support units into our 80 to 20 ratio, and the answer comes from understanding that a division is a monster of many tentacles. And say, in an infantry division, it's not just the guys with machine guns and rifles. You've got crap loads of artillery on divisional and regimental level. You've got AT guns, AA guns, all of that stuff. So as a simple solution, I decided to cut the cool slop high into two on a different axis. Which brings us to premise number three, the actual demotorization that happened in the Wehrmacht. It actually started much sooner than you'd think. In in summer 1940, right after the invasion of France, the then Chief of General Staff Franz Halder already proposed it. It was right after victory in France, when they captured crap loads of vehicles and they're thinking about demotorization. Why? Not enough fuel, not enough infrastructure to supply it. So we need to do something to remove all motorized vehicles, everything that consumes fuel from all formations that don't need it. Motorcycles, personal cars, staff cars, all of that has to go in infantry or cavalry divisions, so that the tanks and the motorized infantry can have their fuel and do their job. And this is where we get to the final cool composition model that I propose. So you may use 10% of your cool slots on tanks and motorized slash mechanized infantry, 40% of your cool slots on non-motorized infantry, 10% of your slots on motorized support units, which includes armored cars, self-propelled guns of any kind, all guns, artillery, AA, AC with motorized transports, and obviously tank destroyers. And then you have 40% of your cool slots to spend on horse-driven supports and support units without transports. So you can already imagine that with this approach you're gonna have lots and lots of infantry and lots and lots of artillery. Noting that pioneers and grenadiers are kind of disadvantaged because it's very expensive to give them transport, so you're probably gonna spend all of those motorized unit slots on tanks, plus these units are slow. Moreover, the tyranny of the 15 centimeter gun is over. It requires a motorized transport, meaning that it's pretty expensive to get it into the field and you'll have have to do with 10.5 centimeter guns most of the time. This is also a good place to start appreciating the non-mechanized AT and AA guns. So my procedure for calculating all this stuff is first to determine the number of planes you're gonna have. Unfortunately it's very difficult to compare the resources consumed by the planes and the resources consumed by the army, so this approach, this demotorization approach, only pertains to your ground forces, so you decide how many planes you bring into the battle and then divide the remaining slots into the four groups. As an example, let's look through my order of battle in the Stalingrad scenario of the main campaign.
campaign. First of all, I prepared my Air Force. I more or less knew what kind of resistance I would get in this mission, so I spent 16 cool slots on my Air Force, leaving me with just 95 slots. Then we'll calculate the 20% of these 95 that will go into motorized units, which is 19, and then we split them evenly between tanks slash motorized infantry and motorized support units. Since 19 is not number and you can't have half of a cool slot, you either give 10 cool slots to tanks and 9 to supports, or as I did in this case, 9 to tanks and 10 to supports. 95 minus 19 is 76, which is what you get to spend on your non-motorized stuff. You divide it in 2, you get 38 and 38. 38 cool slots is enough for 10 units of mountaineer infantry and 2 units of pioneers. By the way, mountaineers have a bit of close defense, so they're slightly better in cities than normal infantry. As for supports, I spent 30 of my 38 slots on 10 artillery units that cost 3 slots each, 2 light anti-air artillery guns, and this is a bit of cheating on my behalf, 3 motorcycle recon units. And I already can hear you screaming, YOU HYPOCRITE! THESE CLEARLY HAVE MOTORS INSIDE! So my justification for using these is that without them it's very difficult to have any recon Recon units, well, unless you get planes for that. You can also argue that in a demotorization scenario, these units could just as well have been bicycle units, which is not something unheard of, but unfortunately doesn't exist in the game. In any case, this approach to building your core force is not set in stone, and it's up to you to explore its limits and find what you are comfortable with. So, this is the method. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, I'll be happy to clear any doubts, and let me just points out a few miscellaneous points about this approach. As you may have guessed, I have played in this mode pretty far into the main campaign. I really wanted to make it kind of a realistic playthrough with a historical losing branch of the campaign. I also set the difficulty to Generalissimus and added the Europe on a shoestring trait, which essentially reduces the amount of prestige you get even further. So far I've been pretty successful under the time of the recording, I'm at the invasion of Normandy scenario, which should serve as good evidence that this approach to building your core really works. Well, except that the game doesn't really work with it. There is this little problem that horse carriages disappear from the game starting from the 1st of January 1944. So to correct that you need to slightly change the unit's CSV file, which is in the folder of the game, and to make it easier for you I have uploaded the updated file, you'll find the link in the description. The only thing you need to do is to copy this file into the appropriate folder and overwrite. Make sure you back up your original unit CSV file, just in case. And the only thing that my file will do to your game is that it will extend the lifespan of horse carriages to the 1st of January 1946. So this is it. I really hope this idea inspires you to play Pantsicorsu in a slightly different way, and I'll be happy to see your questions, comments, and perhaps after-action reports in the comments. Cheers and stay tuned.